slight moment of panic before answering. Grandpa Ron was Santa's helper, and occasionally he would loan Santa his bells. Sam was satisfied with his answer. It just made sense that his father's grandpa knew Santa, Santa well enough to loan him his bells. In the self-described role as Santa's helper, Ron Everall was the embodiment of the true spirit of Christmas. He believed that Christmas was a time for family. He had a limitless love and respect for those around him. He gave him himself whatever was requested. He brought this love and caring to everyone he visited. In a way, he carried Christmas with him throughout the whole year. It is this same limitless love, this same respect for others, this same appreciation for, for family, this giving of self to an idea that is greater than any one person that I am teaching to my son. My grandfather never stopped believing in Santa. My father has never stopped believing in Santa, and I will never stop believing in Santa. It is my hope that my son will forever know Santa. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. Now, that was from Santa Claus's grandson. Now you can have to put up with the son. Thank you. Appreciate you coming down. And as if my magic, we'll send him around. And no, that's not horse hair in him. You remember when you heard the story from Ronald and Sam, that's Santa's hair in those bells. I'm eating something right now. Uh, Ronald has done some research and he tells us that those bells are from about 1850. And we're not really quite exactly sure of the provenance of them, but they've been passed down and passed down, and Santa happened to come by them. Somebody gave them to him, right? And so uh, we know those bells have been around for 40, 50 years, maybe 60 years. But other than that, they, they probably were something uh, from a uh, horse a sleigh bell somewhere back there. But anyway, you've heard the grandson, now it's the son's turn. Uh, most of you, or half, I know half of you, but I, I love to use the phrase, when you come up and shake my hand and introduce yourself and you ask me who I am, I'm getting a little bit older and I love to say, well, how soon do you need to know? <laughs> so you'll all have to reintroduce yourself to me as we go along. Uh, my name is Gary Everall Brooks. My mother married Ron when I was about five years old. My father died just after World War II. So Ron has always been my dad. I never knew my real father. So I have always had Santa Claus for a father. Uh, and that's just the way life has been. It's like Ronald says, we do believe in Santa Claus in our house because we live there. Uh, and it's like Ronald says, from about the time we were six or seven years old, we were not only riding the fire truck with Santa Claus, but we were having, helping line up the children on Main Street and pass out the candy canes. Uh, so that was that was pretty interesting, but I would like to tell you just just a little bit more. Uh, Ron was born in McMinnville in 1919. He was born on the family farm out in the Hon Creek Road, which is just out to the Oregon Vineyard Supply Tractor Place, and down to the left a few a few miles. He went through the McMinnville School District, uh, had a short crack at Oregon State College, one one term at least, to try to play football. At about that time, he went off to uh, serve as an aircraft mechanic in Ireland during World War II. Uh, and I don't, know, I don't know exactly what the transition was, maybe it had something to do with the aircraft, but anyway, he was, he was taken from being an aircraft mechanic in Ireland, and he was assigned to the Navy, and can you imagine he was brought back to the States and stationed in Tulloch. <laughs> now isn't that going around the world, you know, whatever. So he was a typical government, I suppose. He went to Ireland first, and then back to Tulloch. And so he spent the rest of his career at Tillamook. Now, I, I realize that I'm pre half of you are preaching to the choir because most of you know who I'm talking about. But uh, right after World War II, Ron came back to McMinnville, kind of resurrected a, 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 a half-defunct dairy. And in those days, the dairy had cows, and the dairy was located where what we call the Shadowwood Development, part of Michael Book is now. There was a big dairy barn and some cows back in there. And that was about 46 or 47, I believe. By about 1950, they needed to greatly expand their milk processing system, so they, they moved and established on the corner of 12th and Adams. And for those of you who've been here forever, Adams wasn't here in those days. Adams wasn't through, not through street yet. But anyway, Sunshine Dairy existed on the corner of 12th and Adams for about 30 years. And for any of you that were here prior to 1980, you may remember Sunshine Dairy, and that was his business. And in 1980, he and my mom and, and their 
silent partner, or rather silent partner, has cut, sold out the business, and that was kind of the end of it. But my, my father was the person, Mike Ronald says, not only did he love those throngs and throngs of school children and Christmas uh, carolers around him, but he lived his life that way his entire life. Uh, I remember in 1980, probably 81 or 82, the folks were getting ready to, to sell the house that we built on Devil's Lake in the 60s. And I says, Mom, I think we really ought to keep this in the family. And she kind of took me aside. She says, I really can't wait to get out of here. She says, I'm tired of running a hotel for 40 guests every week. <laughs> so she, she was ready to be out of the hotel business. She says, no, 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 don't do that, don't do that. Uh, so anyway, that, that was the way life was. It didn't matter where Ron was, whether he was, uh, uh, for many, uh, some years, he was president of the chamber. He was the Dalton ruler at the Elks Club, but he was, he was always busy, 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 and, and he was busy, busy wherever there was lots of people. Just, just loved being out and, and doing his community things. Um, this, this week, there's going to be, I believe, an article in the News Register commemorating it's been 20 years since he last rode the fire truck. For those of you that are relatively new in our area, Ron passed away about 1993, dying of complications from diabetes. That was the real reason that he had to quit doing his set of thing because he had lost the best part of one leg and he just wasn't very mobile. And it wasn't, a, uh, you know, the fire chief in those days got to be a little persnickety. They didn't really think it was appropriate for Santa Claus to come to town in a wheelchair. Uh -huh. So that's when Ronald took over the job for a short time. So what else may I tell you? Let me just have a quick look at my notes here. And I think we've pretty well covered it. We've still got the bells going around someplace. If we lose the bells, I don't hear it. I think that that pretty much covers the, the details that I have on my notes, but I'm, I'm going to have kind of a, a little bit of a group discussion. And I'm going to go around the table for those of you who, who never knew Ron. I'm going to give you a chance to learn more about it. And we're going to start over here with Karen. Karen, are you awake? <laughs> Karen, you're on. Tell us about Santa Claus. Well, I think mostly, again, when I was a kid growing up, I mean, you look forward to Santa coming down Thank you, thank you. And I'm just going to go around the table, and if you you know Santa, you get to speak. So Don, you're next.
like to share? Yeah, um, the only comment I make about your talk is that I wouldn't call Ed's coat a Simon Parker. <laughs> <laughs> running the garbage service. He pretty much let Dad run the dairy, even though they were equal partners. <laughs>